I like their french fries. I think they make the best french fries here. Do you like french fries? Um, no. No? Yes. Yes or no? No, but the french fries are the best, definitely. Definitely. On the 25th of July 2009, the little Southeast Asian country of Malaysia lost one of its most prolific filmmakers. Yasmin Ahmad was not just a scriptwriter, a director, or an executive at an advertising agency. She was a storyteller, and a good one too. And a steady hand that peeled back the curtain on diversity in a culture that is unique to countries like Malaysia and Singapore. Try asking anyone who has ever written about her works, and they would struggle to not mention multiculturalism or the coexistence of diverse cultures. Whether it's the various TV ads or the feature films that she directed, most of Yasmin Ahmad's work dropped a spotlight on the multilingual, multiracial, and multireligious nature of her home country to great effect. In her short filmmaking career spanning the last 10 years of her life, she directed six full-length feature films, which collectively won 16 awards, including 10 international ones. Of those six films, none has made a greater cultural impact than her second film, Sepet. Released in 2005, Sepet tells the story of teenagers Jason and Orchid, who fall in love and navigate through the trials and tribulations of an interracial relationship. Orchid is from a Muslim Malay family, and Jason is from the Malaysian Chinese community. Though it might not seem strange from an outsider's perspective, in Malaysia, it's relatively uncommon for anyone to marry in or out of the Muslim faith, and interracial relationships like this are thus considered a taboo topic in many parts of the country. With this in mind, Yasmin Ahmad uses the conflicts encountered by these two central characters to frame an incredibly important story, where she holds a mirror up to prejudice, to discrimination, to ignorance, and to fear, while also cutting through all of that with a movie that is, at its core, a love story. She does this in a number of ways. In the film, there are people who explicitly state how weird or off-putting they find this relationship to be, whilst others acknowledge it but are far more open-minded to it, reflecting the diverse opinions of citizens of the country today. But I think Yasmin Ahmad also made this film so that we, the viewers, reflect upon ourselves. Because we all grew up in such a multicultural environment, we each bring our own set of biases, prejudices, and perspectives to a film. We project our expectations on the characters and relate to characters whose perspectives most closely match our own. And the question that Sepet bravely asks is, at the end of the day, are we really that different from each other? Is someone who is more similar to you more deserving of love? If so, why? And if not, then why are there still racial tensions all over the world? Can you be religious while also accepting towards people who have different beliefs? I mean, who cares if that someone likes the other someone because of their race? It's when they hate them. That's the problem. Like many significant films, Sepet does not shy away from social political commentary to ask these questions, with scenes that appear to comment on deep set issues like racial discrimination, gangsterism, consent, and Western supremacy. Even the film's name, Sepet, is the Malay word for slit eyed, often used in a teasing or derogatory way to describe the eyes of Chinese or Oriental people. It even has time for commentary on the decline of the local film industry, which I think is pretty ballsy, but funny. But the new Malay movies are... What's up, man? No, I mean. In its most simplistic form, Sepet is about love. What it means to love in a place where there seems to be some invisible barriers to love. But deeper yet, how powerful love can be in driving human beings across different time periods of their lives. This is best demonstrated by the two sequels to Sepet, Gubra and Mukshin, which follow some of the same characters, but take place quite some time in the future and in the past. In all these movies, the power of love to cripple or rejuvenate is pretty clear, and is best summarized in Sepet by the line He doesn't know me well enough to like me, but he's in love with me. 
You could say that the structure and direction of Sepet is a little rough around the edges. There is a certain rawness about the conversations, as Yasmin chose to let many of the scenes play out improv style. What this does create, however, is an environment where the actors can infuse the local flair and slang to make their conversations more realistic, but also comedic. As a result, they speak to each other like they do in real life. And realism in dialogue is something that I appreciate deeply when it comes to a multicultural movie, something that movies like Crazy Rich Asians didn't quite do for understandable reasons. Sepet uses this dialogue to embellish the essence of this well-realized movie. It has the rare charm of a film that is trying to be progressive while also looking to history and the good old days for inspiration. Yasmin Ahmad and her films are icons of diversity that can serve as role models for future generations. And when Google chose her to be the first Malaysian person represented on their homepage in 2014, it kind of says something about her influence, or at least what her influence should be. What I think that she would say is that we are silly if we cannot look beyond our race differences, that we all want ownership. Our beautiful country is the way it is because of all of us. And all of us, whether you are Chinese, you are Indian, you are Bidayu, you are Kalabit, you are Ibans, all the, all the different races in Malaysia, we have so many races in Malaysia, we all collectively add to the beauty that is Malaysia. So we have to remember that and, and we have to like chill out with each other, just enjoy life. Uh, you know, everybody should just, you know, enjoy the culture that we are being, that we have and protect it rather than to find reasons to not have, be happy with each other and fight and destroy what we have. So I think that's what she would say. Yasmin Ahmad uses the culture and the issues to direct a film that not only serves to represent the art of her homeland, but also serves as a message to the people, asking us who we want to be in the future. A question that people around the world will always be asking. I get accused of being sentimental with my films and uh, optimistic. And I usually say, well, what do you want? You know, it's pretty shitty out there. You want more of it in cinema? What's wrong with you? When she picked up as a child, <laughs> you know, and uh, why obliterate hope? And uh, enough of that already. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching. I am filming this near the date of Malaysia's Independence Day, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to share with you a little bit on one of our country's best modern storytellers. Have you seen any Yasmin Ahmad movies and what did you think about them? Comment below. I'd really love to know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video and you think someone else can benefit from it, then share it with them. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more video essays from me as as well as reviews and subscribe to the channel above I'd appreciate that too I will be back with another video for you guys soon so until next time have a great week ahead maximum hype and peace out